That's a pretty happy tune, isn't it? I like that. Uh, Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Yeah, that was a fun one. It'll be real fun tomorrow in the shower. Trying to figure out that part. Do 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 do. <laughs> I'm gonna butcher it. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for teaching us that. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. And uh, chapter two. And verse six. One thing we're gonna learn. One thing tonight. And it's a pretty simple one. And so probably fifty percent of us here have the intellect to handle it. Chapter two. <laughs> What you say? Yeah, chapter 2. Yeah, verse 6. <laughs> verse 6. All right. Uh, the husbandman that laboreth must first be partaker of the fruits. Father, help us. Help us to get the gist of the Scripture this evening, to learn the truth behind it, and be able to practice what we preach. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I've heard this passage uh, alluded to in reference to taking care of the pastor, supporting the pastor and so forth. And uh, that's fine. That's an application for it. Uh, I've heard it related much the way that the Apostle Paul illustrates that, you know, using the Old Testament law that you're not supposed to muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. And that's fine as well. It's a fine application for it. Uh, on uh, the careful contextual consideration though, I think that it's deeper than that. I think that it's plainer than that as well. And there's more to it than that. And it just really reminds me of a saying that my grandma used to use. And she used to say, practice what you preach. Practice what you preach. How many of y'all had mother or grandma or somebody said, practice what you preach. In other words, don't say it, do it and say it. Or say it and do it. Don't say something you don't do. And uh, there, are <laughs> there are many individuals that know truths about things that they don't practice, right? Um, almost every smoker I've ever met would tell you that they could teach a class on quitting smoking. Uh, I have a relative that says, I could teach anyone to quit smoking. I've quit so many times, I uh, have more experience than anybody I know at quitting smoking. And uh, my response would be, I don't think I want to learn that from you or anyone else because I don't like to start smoking and learn to quit it either, but I don't think I want to learn that from you because I want someone to teach me to smoke, or to smoke out, no, I want someone to teach me not to smoke, hypothetically, who knows how not to smoke. Uh, <laughs> you know, the people with the problems are always the one given the counsel, aren't they? I mean, a guy who can't have a decent relationship will tell you how to have a relationship. I mean, he'll be like, "Man, I had a hundred girlfriends, so you ask me, and I'll give you, you know, I'll give you advice on women." I was like, "You had a hundred of them. You don't know nothing, man. I'm sorry. You, you're not the guy I want to talk to. I want to talk to a guy that knows how to convert one relationship into marriage and then stay in marriage. You know, you have somebody that says, "You know, my wife and I, we've been married for 50 years. Well, I'm pretty well interested in what they have to say about marriage." Now, it's not always a help, but if I'm just really not into going to somebody that's failed at something to ask them how to succeed. You know, sometimes sometimes we get silly about counseling. You know, we think, well, somebody is going through this so they can relate to someone who's going through it, and so they'd be a good person to help to counsel. Now, sometimes that's, that's decent, but actually it's not really all that terribly wise. You want to find somebody's, you know, if it's something that's self-inflicted because of sin or something that's not right, you want to find somebody that's not dealing with that problem. Say, hey man, how come this, how can you don't have this problem? You know? You got a, a, a man and his wife and they don't fight. You know, they don't argue all the time. And they're happy together and they enjoy each other's companionship. Well, go and ask them, you know, uh, what's going on with you guys? How come you all have so much fun together? 
They're, they're the people to ask, not the guy that, you know, well, you know, I've learned, you know, just not to talk to her. And then we get, you know, and that kind of stuff. You know? It's like, well, you know, after my fourth marriage, I decided, you know, I'm just not going to fight it anymore. Well, that's not the guy to ask, is it? Find somebody that's figured it out and ask them. Practice what you preach. Uh, my mom uh, had a, these are these are just two sayings that, that when, I, when I was a kid, my mom used to always say, finish what you start. And uh, that was a good one. But practice what you preach was my grandma. She used to always say, practice what you preach. Don't say it. Don't tell people uh, to do something that you don't do yourself. And uh, usually it's something you tell kids because kids are always telling their siblings or their friends, right, what they should do or shouldn't do. You shouldn't, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you're doing it right now. So practice what you preach. Okay. Paul is giving a lot of counsel to Timothy on teaching people. And, and uh, he's giving him some really, really uh, strong advice. But verse 2 of chapter 2, "...in the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also." And that's really the model for churches. That's a model for the church. In other words, the things you've uh, heard of me among many witnesses, commit to faithful men who are able to teach others also. Uh, Paul told the church at Philippi, Philippians 4, uh, verses 7 through 9, the, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now listen, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And Paul said, do what I do. In other words, what he's saying is, I practice what I preach. And so then in chapter 2 of Timothy, he said, the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also, he said, what I tell you, you do. And what you do, you tell others to do. And uh, practice what you preach. And as he is giving some instruction, you know, endure hardness. No man that warreth and tangleth himself. Don't get tangled up with the affairs of this life. Then he said, if a man strive for masteries, yet he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And then he says, the husband that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. God give us believers who are impassioned about truth to the extent that it affects their own lives. And they live themselves what they preach. And then when people come there and say, what's going on here? You can say, here's what I'm preaching. And then you can teach others to do the same things. Now Christian, there are just a couple of simple, simple applications that we can... Uh, take home and, and uh, mull over our, with our ice cream. First of all, uh, first of all, get your get your act together. Get your act together. And you say, Pastor, that's not very profound. That is, I mean, just just grow up. Start living what the Word of God says. You know, <laughs> it's it is high time in each of our lives that we come to a place and a time when we say. Here's the truth. It's something to know, and it's an altogether different thing to actually do it. And we don't debate in our lives anymore. It's just, just quit debating. Don't debate Bible commandments. Don't debate Bible commandments. Well, I know the Bible says, but... No, don't debate. Okay, I'll do it. I, I, I have had in, in my ministry the privilege a couple of times of having people that if the Bible says it, that's just it. I, I like the, the slogan some people use, God said it. And that's, uh, what is it, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And that really is just God said it. Yeah, that's, that's what some people say, but I like God said it, that settles it. That's good, right there. It doesn't matter if I, you know what, I believe it when I, I'll show that I believe it when I do it. So God says it, I'll do it. And that's a pretty simple way to live, isn't it? Pretty simple way to live. You know, we know a lot of things that we don't do. The average believer just knows a lot of things they don't do. We know about faithfulness. I could this evening compile 1,011 
uh, steps or practical um, areas in a believer's life to be faithful. I could just go on the back row and say, you give me five, you give me ten, you give me a hundred, whatever. We could come up with a thousand areas where faithfulness applies this evening and won't uh, work an iota of good or make a bit of difference in your life unless you do what you know. And this is precisely all Paul is saying to Timothy, do what you know. You know, the things you've heard of me among many witnesses, the same teach others that they may teach others. I'd really like to start, you know, skip the first step in that process and get the rest of it rolling. You know, in other words, y'all start doing what needs to be done. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> you ever see that guy? Uh, my pastor. Uh, men's work day. Uh, we would have our church work day. We'd have church work day at our church. And my pastor would be like, well, we need to clean up the parking lot and the parsonage needs painted. And we need this and this and this. And I'm going to go get some donuts and talk to somebody. And he is gone. I'm just thinking, man, we're all here to work. We're working on your house. You get yourself over here and help. You know, involve yourself. You know where it really begins is when you begin to do what's supposed to be done. And then you have some credibility when you tell other people to do it. And they'll have credibility when they do it and tell other people to do it. And that's it. And that's it. It is such a profound, such a deep, and logical, often overlooked simple step in the Christian faith. Practice what you preach. Father, help us to do that this evening. Help us to believe you at your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. We have ice cream. Did I hurt y'all's feelings by ending too early? Yeah. <laughs>